2023 FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand is nearing completion. Thirty-two teams began the tournament. Soon we will find out who will be crowned world champions. Thousands of fans are showing their support in the stadiums. Millions more are watching the drama unfold on televisions around the world. The platform for the women's game looks set to reach new heights. Women's sports right now feels like we're sort of out of the just like the dogged fight phase not that there's not a lot still to fight for it feels like a real opportunity um, to kind of like blow the lid off just in terms of fanfare and media and sponsorships and the sort of larger business around this sport the united states went into the tournament as favorites as they targeted a third straight world cup title but off the pitch, the U.S. women's team also lead the way in the fight for equality. For bottom line, you know, equality is actually good in a shocking turn of events. Equality is actually good for business. This is a team that shines a spotlight on excellence on the pitch and a source of inspiration off it. So how did the U.S. women's team get here? And what more needs to happen to raise the profile of the women's game and level the playing field around the world? Racing Louisville is based in the U.S. state of Kentucky. It is one of 12 professional U.S. teams in the National Women's Soccer League. Kim Bjorkegren is the coach of Racing Louisville. I think we all know the American sport is all about the winning attitude and that is something I really like and that's a part of the soccer here as well. So it's, it's a culture thing that it's all about to win. Although women's football has made some incredible steps forward, it is not yet at the same commercial level as the men's game. The prize money available at the 2023 Women's World Cup is $110 million, but the prize money on offer at last year's Men's World Cup in Qatar was $440 million. That's four times as much. While the average salary for players in England's Women's Super League is $53,000. But for men, the average is $3.8 million for players in the English Premier League. Despite that, interest in the women's game has continued to grow. In 2013, the average attendance for the opening weekend of matches was 3,321. This year, the average totaled more than 15,000. Jalen Howell is the captain of Racing Louisville. Yeah, I mean, I, it's the style of play. Um, it's very fast. It's super transitional. Um, you know, coming even coming out of college, uh, it's just it's a next level of fast. Everybody's good. Everybody's good on the pitch. So I think it's just that next level of um, you know competitiveness that you really have to you have to look at when you step on the field. It doesn't matter who you're playing or what day it is. It's it's going to be hard and it's going to be a battle. And I think that's what pushes players. That's what develops players. And that's what I love about it. I know that every day is going to be a challenge, and every day is going to push me, and every game is going to push me. A key ingredient to the success of the U.S. team is identifying young, talented players. It requires a nationwide network of clubs, youth camps, coaching and talent scouting. In all, it is estimated there are 1.7 million U.S. female football players. I just think it's great. I think we do such a great job of getting coaches everywhere, getting young talent, different talent. Um, I was a part of the youth programs and I think that's really what like where I start to envision like I want to play for the women's national team and I think you get a little glimpse of that with the youth program and I think they just do an amazing job. I think that's you know that's a huge part because getting players while they're young and still developing and then teaching them the concepts and the mentality that we want you know at the the full women's national team is huge and I think you know that's what makes it easier to transition into a full women's national team or into a pro environment is if you're taught these things young. The 
football journey for most players begins at youth camps like this one. This is Chicago City Soccer Club. Lakeisha Gums is from England. Good, Abby. She coaches the women's teams. Coming over here, I knew it would be big. I didn't know how big it would be. Even like the low, really young children, seeing so many girls play football is amazing. At home, we have girls playing football, but not in the numbers they have here. Like, there's so much interest in the sport. Soccer is the number one sport for females, so that is amazing. Ready, play! Many of those here aspire to follow in the footsteps of their heroes. Ah! Especially just like watching some of the girls playing here, it really just shows me there's a lot of competition and I'm, I'm going to have to keep working harder and it, yeah, I do. I really want to follow in their footsteps. They really do inspire me. Football is honestly a piece of me at this point in my life. I've played for over three quarters of my life. Um, it's kind of taught me um, how to be who I am. I'm a very structured individual. I've grown up going to training, going to school, being disciplined in each area. So it's become a part of me. Perfect. Always front, uh, opposite your partner. Working two and a half minute sets. Like the coaching staff, making sure that they know what they're doing, making sure that they know their surroundings and how to play with the ball. Like vision, I feel like vision's very important. And you know, just loving the game. I feel like when the coach implements love into the game and heart and passion, that's all you can really ask for. City three, one, two, three, City. So how did the US become such a key player in women's soccer? Part of the answer is down to Title IX, which became law in 1972. Title IX protects people against sexual discrimination in educational programs or activities that receive federal financial assistance. I loved going to college, honestly. I mean, I, I learned so much as a soccer player, but also just as a, as a person off the field and just habits off the field. And, you know, in the U.S., most girls, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing a shift now, but most girls went to college um, before they went pro or before they went to the full women's national team. And I think, you know, our, our college system is great, and that's why we do see so many great players at the next level. Uh, because it is so competitive. I think it's just steps in the right direction, you know. Um, with all things, we're nowhere where we need to be, but any step is progress. So, you know, thankful for Title IX, obviously. It gives me the platform to do what I'm doing, so couldn't be more grateful for that opportunity. I just think that the more that we can push for, for all of this, the better, and I think that um, this whole team is really taking the responsibility and really using our platforms to just make the world a better place and we're going to keep doing that. Yes, <laughs> getting these girls into, into their education but also playing football at a bigger level, getting the support in there. I mean, these girls that we have here, they're, they're getting hundreds of people to their game. Obviously, there's always dropouts in sports, um, especially in the girls we see around the age of 12 to 14. I feel there's less here than is at home. America's doing something right to keep their players going. But other countries are aiming to close the gap. I think that's huge for the, the sport, that's huge for women's soccer, is just seeing that gap close. I, I honestly think that makes it more fun, it's just, you know, every game is, is going to be tough and every team has different qualities and I think that'll make people want to watch more, honestly, and uh, viewership will go up just knowing that every game is going to be competitive. I think uh, the women's football is so much better now if you compare it with 10, 15 years ago. So I think for every World Cup or Olympics or Euros or whatever it is, we see better and better teams. It's not just on the pitch that have seen huge improvements for the women's game. Off it, the US team has become a symbol for equality. Following the 2019 World Cup success, the US team made a stand, arguing they should be paid the same as their male counterparts, given they are more successful, both on the pitch and commercially. Years of litigation followed, but in 2022 a collective bargaining agreement was signed with the US Soccer Federation. 
It means both the men's and women's teams will get the same compensation for all competitions, including the World Cup, as well as the same commercial revenue sharing mechanism. I feel like it's really important and I mean, I feel like women deserve just as much resources and different things as men, so I feel like it's definitely was a really big thing, but obviously we're pushing for more and there's still a lot more to be done. It's so inspiring to see them fight for equal pay off the field and fight for opportunities for, for younger generations. You know, they're not just fighting for them themselves in, in that moment, but it's for generations to come and it's for me and it's for, and, and that inspires me to do the same thing for, you know, the players underneath me and the younger players coming up. And I, I think, you know, you can just feed off of each other, but for them to spark that, um, it makes it easier for, you know, the rest of us to kind of follow in that. And obviously in other areas, then, you know, women can be confident in, in fighting for the same things and not even the sports realm, but just, you know, the regular workforce and everyday life. And um, so I, I think that's huge and it's really inspiring. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a boy, you still uh, need to have the same dreams. And now they actually can have it. We don't just want the people that can run for 90 minutes on the pitch. You know, we want people that are extending beyond the realm um, of the game, doing what they can for the community, the country, just advocating for more than just soccer. So I think that's huge as, you know, not only being an athlete, but being a good person with that representation. are now in the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. The tournament is providing another chance to showcase women's football and potentially further close the gap on the men's game. We want women's soccer to one day, you know, have the viewership that a men's World Cup would have or, um, you know, that the MLS would have. And I know that we'll get there. We've seen it closing already. Um, it's just going to keep getting closer and closer, providing the work has continued to be done. That is the important part. Well, I started football many years ago. I've seen a huge change already. The changes that we're going to see over the next 5, 10, 15 years is just going to be, it's going to be massive. We see the men and women playing just as hard, but it's just not equal. But now, it's different. Like, it's completely different. Everybody wants to watch the women's game. Sports give women opportunity. So the more we grow sports and the more we grow viewership, the more opportunity it is for for women in, in all countries. And so that's ultimately what we want. It's bigger than the sport. I think that's that's really important for me to see is just how sports can change lives. And so it's not just about growing women's football and growing fans and money. It's, it's truly changing lives and it's truly changing, um, you know, female opportunities in different parts of the world.